Greetings, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Welcome to episode 140 of The Glow. Really loving what we're doing. I'm going to get into some really great stuff with John Stringer today, my friend, my <coughs> cool creative colleague. He's joining us right now. I'm going to get him on in just a few moments. Um, get into some, as, 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 is the case we'll get into wherever it goes but um the theme i have is channeling your highest genius and that's something we've had some fun exploring and delving into welcome danielle um recent recently so look forward to sharing that conversation with you welcome wafika when you're entering please share where you're from i always love hearing where you're from i believe wafika's from syria i want to hear more about how things are going for her there, Danielle's from Canada, John's in Atlanta, I'm in Pennsylvania. Today, my name is Brian Piergrossi, author of The Big Glow in the Wild, The Now, life coach, retreat facilitator, um, online courses and classes, and, and this, this is getting increasingly fun and exciting. This is available now here every Tuesday, 11.30 a.m., live on Facebook. Also available now on YouTube, also available now on SoundCloud, also available on my blog. This is all on the replay and um, soon to be available on iTunes as well in a podcast format. So lots of exciting things unfolding and coming into being. As you come in, you can click the heart. Click the hearts or the wow face. Let me know you're here. Feel free to comment throughout the show, throughout the episode. Um, ask any questions that you want to ask, anything you want to delve into. The intention is for it to be an interactive space, a co-creative interactive space, a community space for all of us to share. I'm going to just do something really quick on this laptop over here. I'm going to, there's a share button. So you can share this with your friends. Um, hmm. You can share it with your friends when you find out where it is, which is what I'm working on right now. Um, but yeah, it's a great way to share, you know, when there's a conversation that's happening that's that's interesting, that's um, exploratory, to share it, to share it with the people that you're connected to so they can participate with it too. So that can happen now, that can also happen in the, the replay, in the archives. Um, so that's possible as well. It's been really great. We had Dale Allen Hoffman on last week who um, John and Dale and I led a retreat called the Urban Mystic Retreat. And um, that was really great. It was a five-day retreat in um, Asheville. If you haven't seen that, you can you can see the archive of that from last week. I thought I got a, really, a lot of really great feedback about that. I thought that was a great conversation that we had together and a lot of participation and then um, John and I are doing a retreat April 20th to April 22nd in Asheville and there's still a few spots left Asheville's an amazing place those of you who have been following me know that I'm a that I'm a huge fan of Asheville it's where I've called home for over seven years and um, the mountains are magical. There's just something magical with the mountains when you're in the energy of the space that's just really palpable and is really felt. It's like this kind of, we call it like grandmama energy because uh, they're the oldest mountains in the world. Lush green in the spring, flowers. And then... Um, the community is really special. There's just a really special community there. Really special sense of um, people that are 
just on the path of living authentically and creatively and um, listening to their hearts and and uh, really open heartedness. Um, that's really special. Welcome Beatrice from Holland. Welcome Kathy and Annie. Kathy and Annie are both going to be with us for the retreat. So that's really exciting. And they're even on the on the uh, flyer. So John, I don't know if you have a it says your camera's not on. So as soon as your camera's on, we'll get you on here to join us. So there's something with your just getting the camera ready to set up to go. So if it doesn't work on your laptop, then you just go to um, your your phone, perhaps. One of the two. Welcome, Martin. Martin joining us from Southern California. I'm sure it's sunny there, right? What is it? It's March. It should be sunny sunny there today. Get a little rain in the winter, but bright sunshine the rest of the year. Who else do we have here? Good day. Who else do we have here? <laughs> it's great to have all you with us. Thanks for being here. Um, John and I, we've done like six, seven, eight retreats together. And they've been like, there's just such a powerful synergy that we have in, in connecting together and, and committing together. That's such a natural flow, such a smooth flow that we just... We just keep on doing it, you know, we just keep on doing it. And there's a sense of community that's forming. And I think that what we, what we long for and what we need the most and what we're um, community together, because we live in a culture that's with a sense of isolation and loneliness and it's really plaguing us. There he is. What's up, brother? Can you hear me okay? What's up? Awesome, man. Yeah. I my laptop didn't want to get on, so <laughs> <laughs> I used my phone instead. Cool. Great to see you. Good to see you too, my friend. Thank you so much for having me on here, man. This is way cool, and just feel grateful to be with you, man. Yeah, it's fun. I've, you know, it's interesting because like a lot of people have seen, a lot of people that I know have like seen. Um, our flyers or our our you know stuff on Facebook about our events and so obviously there's people that have been to the retreats that know you and been to like the concerts that we've put on together but there's a lot of people that say like oh he seems like a great guy I'd love to like you know get to know him more so this is the chance for all those people to like you know just connect with you and me and have that opportunity so yeah it's a real real blessing there's like right, a, yeah. what's on your right, your right shoulder? What is that? Is that your hair? It, yeah. So, uh, I came from the youth of unity rally, rally a three day uh -huh. retreat. And uh -huh. at the end, they do something called fuzzies where they tie little blessings to your uh, name tag, but everybody tied it to my locks because i didn't have my name tag on <laughs> <laughs> so that's awesome yeah the, the screen's like really small so like it's hard for me to see like what's that makes sense what's happening in the screen yeah it reminds me of uh what's the funk p-funk guy george clinton yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. i got all these colorful yeah. things in my hair now <laughs> yeah. yeah so it's pretty funny yeah it's good for the camera get some color there you go it's little pop <laughs> So was that part of your wild morning? Uh, well, no, my wild morning was my meditation, just um, feeling into all these different emotions. I mean, 
my journey this morning and up until now has been all sorts of emotions and then questioning, okay, the ch- with the chain of emotion, questioning mm-hmm. and then delving into feeling the essence and knowing the essence. So aligning and feeling into who am I really? Because, mm-hmm. you know, with those changes and the beliefs that we put into it, you know, it's like showing up. It's like, okay, but who am I really? <laughs> so it was a lot of that. It's just a wild, you know, a fun journey. Um, feeling into that and then even feeling like knowing arises and then being distracted and then having those moments of um, uncertainty but then aligning and knowing that even that's okay <laughs> even that's fine and just letting it flow man so just delving into a lot of the uh, emotional things and the um seeking or I guess seeking to let go of the distractions letting go that's really what it came down to practicing letting go so as all these things arrive continuing to practice the letting go um, that's been a lot of the wild ride today <laughs> my first my first instinct was when you told me that was like you were actually awake this morning that was my first <laughs> That's that right. <laughs> yeah, my body was like, "All right, we're getting up at ten ten o'clock." I set the alarm for ten thirty. It got up at ten o'clock. It was like, "All right." <laughs> yeah, I was like, eleven thirty start time. Make sure you have the have to get the alarm set. <laughs> Got to get awesome, up before man. twelve. That's awesome. <laughs> so that was that was a surprise, and then the the wild yeah the wild morning yeah. Even Kathy it's was interesting surprised. how, you know, people think that people think that meditation is like, oh, I just have to sit here and like, it's like this dull, boring thing. Right. Mm. But there's like, there's like more going on, on the inside than there is on the outside. Yeah. I mean, that's where it's like happening. So, yeah, that's true, man. And the, yeah, uh, the fun part for me is, um, it's so funny. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure you can relate how sometimes you feel like you're in this blissful state. And you've got it. <laughs> and then it's like, wait a minute. Who's saying I got it? <laughs> you know? And what is this like, you know, what's this this new belief that's arising? So it's just been practicing um for or I should say for me it's that practicing the letting go and then feeling into what that feels like feels so good, man. That's so that's really um, as things arise, the letting go. The other thing I was del- delving into is the letting go. For me, isn't so much letting go of what's arising. It's letting go of the meaning about what's arising. Um, often, I'm finding a lot of that. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. And you, t- you talk about like... Um that sense of like, oh, I got it now, you know, I got it now, I have it now. Yeah. And then it's kind of like, well, wait a minute, what do I have? Yeah. <laughs> and who's the I that has it? Yep. It yep. thinks they have it. That's it, man. So there's like this like transcendence of, well, everything. <laughs> yeah. And, and experiencing that, um, like, at times I feel myself grasping to feel that expansion. And then I, it's almost as if I'm realizing, wait a minute, I'm trying and resisting. You know, it's almost like as I'm reaching out for uh, a change, it's almost as if I'm resisting what is. Yeah. And then as I'm letting go of... Um, as I start to let go of that, you know, the illusion of what I, what I'm trying to grasp for, or, you know, I want to expand, you know, whatever that is not right now, (laughs) as I let go Mm -hmm. of that, practicing letting go of that, it's like all of a sudden start to feel that it feels better, you know, it starts to feel better. And then I'm suddenly realizing, oh, wow, wait a minute. I'm feeling back into now and, accepting what is just by letting go, <laughs> you know? And I mean, there's many practices that help, but 
for me, that practice is one I feel I'm practicing more. And it just feels good. It really feels good to let go. And, and then that expansion seems to be naturally occurring um, without the grasping or without the resisting. Um, so, so, you know, this not, nothing new that you and I haven't talked about. <laughs> you know, just different ways of describing and um, experience. But it really, for me, it's the experience of it that's, it always seems to like show me some new way, like a puzzle or something, you know, like, oh, check this out, you know, oh, wow. And, it, and, and I'm just learning what feels the best, you know, um, and remembering, because it's so easy to forget for me. Um, easy to get so distracted and um, get caught up in this and that, <laughs> you know, and, and, then, and then not feel good. And then realize, wait a minute, this doesn't feel good. Why am I doing this, you know? This, this does not feel good. So, so remembering feeling good and doing what works to get there, I'm enjoying playing with that, you know? Mm -hmm. I think that's why community or just friend, friends – friendship is is so important or in the east they call it the sangha you know it's like because yeah it's so easy to get distracted because most of the world is like just full of distraction you know that things that pull you outside of yourself like just turn on any commercial or it's, it's always like you know this is out you need this you're not happy and this will make you happy this yeah. new toothpaste or this new shampoo or something you know yeah but like to have that support of people that are on this path together to support each other, I think is really valuable, which is why something like this, you know, like just being on here together and sharing with other people is, uh, it's just really valuable. And of course, like the retreats that we do and just ways to bring community together that's on this path yeah. together is like, just, uh, is like a confirmation, like a reminder, you know, totally. Of what's, yeah. what's, what's essential. That's so true, man. You mentioned, um, uh, channeling inner genius too, at the onset. And yeah. Um, so what it made me think of is when I'm intending to channel or when I'm intending to align and, you know, getting that sense of knowing, applying that through practice has become easy and effortless. Whereas when I'm in other situations, it's kind of like, wait a minute, I'm not applying, um, my my power as consciously to create whatever I want to create. Sometimes I'm applying it very unconsciously, like those unconscious beliefs that pop up when you're in some other situation and whatever story or meaning that you're engaged in, it's like you're creating that experience. Perhaps mm -hmm. unconsciously, but you know that's what you're creating because that's what you're giving your belief to. That's what you're giving your focus in energy and you know presence to and so um what i've been looking at is that difference for for me in the moments where i am intending to align with my highest self they seem so to flow so perfectly and it's like I become so much more aware of the perfection that's happening right then and right there. And then it's so much easier to um, let go of the distraction. But then when <laughs> I'm in these other situations and I'm not aligned with that knowing or with that, um, that source conscious, that consciousness, source energy, and I'm just distracted by all these other conditioned thinking it feels so different. It doesn't feel like I'm watching perfection. It feels uncertain and like there's a jerkiness and a, you know, pain and suffering and anger and confusion, but the essence of it being suffering, whereas when those things come up and I'm aligned, it's almost as if they don't affect me in the sense of I don't suffer from them. Like, yeah, the thought of anger or the thought of any kind of pain or suffering may arise, but when the line, it's it's almost as if I not I don't get entangled in them. Mm 
I'm talking from first person and the, you know, more to um, relay the experience or the journey of it. But that to me is the benefit of us us channeling our energy. <laughs> so like the, the benefit is, you know what? You can ride this journey and this unfolding a lot easier and a lot more enjoyably and, and more fulfilling um, through that alignment, through that alignment with, with your genius, with your knowing. And it feels so much better <laughs> for me anyway. Um, yeah <laughs> it's um it's something that you that you spoke about or we spoke about i think was a really exciting conversation related to what you're saying was we were talking about channeling <clears throat> and we were talking about um of course people channel different entities or they channel different um you know beings from the future uh, alien races etc but we are having this opening about channeling yourself, channeling your highest genius of you, yeah. right? So let's, let's yeah, that's it, it. Kind of relates to what you're just saying, right? It's like right. the the noise kind of quiets down, the the external distraction kind of quiets down, and what you're left with is you. Which who are you? We'll get into that, yeah. right? But who the the essence of you just comes through and it's like you know what to say you know what to do you know like where to move next where to go next what you know what what decision quote unquote to make next and i feel like you know we both get in spaces where we're like um in the in the retreat space leading something at a retreat or if you're leading um um singing to people or you know in a concert where it's like um we're channeling our highest genius yeah. And I think that's what like everybody wants, you know, everybody wants, wants that everyone's, you know, wants to, and like, how do you do that? Right. How do you do that? So that's sort of like, that's kind of the exploration. Yeah. It's, it's um funny how even with what I was describing earlier, like the journey of being in different moments for in knowing we know it's all one moment, right? <laughs> but mm -hmm. what it seems to be unfolding as different moments, it's almost as if the fun part is figuring out or exploring that, what works, you know, exploring, okay, how do I let go? <laughs> you know, it's like, how do I align? How do I, you know, allow? and not judge and not resist and all this stuff. Like, how do I do that? <laughs> you know, how do you do it? But finding those um, practices, I feel like is part of the, um, part of the journey that strengthens our will and strengthens our creative power so we can, it's almost as if once you've chosen to forget, to remember how to align, um, how to allow and how to let go, um, there's a, a path of practice you might choose. And that practice may be a what it feels like to grow and expand, what it feels like to emerge and overcome. It's kind of like the science fiction novels I like to read, <laughs> right? I just love to see that hero's journey of overcoming. But if he just starts at the end, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't have that that ride, that sense of expansion and all of that stuff, right? So the forgetting, bringing us to where we are and expanding and finding our power and finding these practices that work, it has this sense of expansion and this feeling of, you know, uh, growing and all this other stuff. And that kind of feels cool. It feels good. You know, we like it. <laughs> so that's kind of how my ride was this morning. <laughs> you know, my meditation just feel. I like that kind of ride. Now, everybody don't want to choose that ride. Some people just want to go wake up and, you know, have that moment of, I'm done. This I've had enough. This is good. But it's all good. It's, it's just us finding as an extension of all power that it uh, has chosen to forget what does it feel like and what do we prefer to create for our journey of awakening and of 
remembering who we are and, and what feels best, you know, and there's all sorts of <laughs> sorts of limitless opportunities to create that, you know. So it's been um but back to your your point about the al- aligning and channeling that genius, um, finding those practices that work for us. We share our pra- we share our practices and you know, it's kind of like our our tennis shoes, you know. These shoes work really well for me. Check them out. Um, like the what I share a lot is the align, allow, let go. And some people choose that path and they put it on and they modify it and you know, put their own laces on it or, you know, maybe even cut the sole off and resole it with some grounding <laughs> soles. But they you know, but they find what works for them and it and it helps them get to that place where they're centered, present, aligned, and then that knowing comes through however it wants to come through for them, you know? So that's how, um, mm-hmm. I, and I think at the, the retreats give us that opportunity to practice it um, where we're all intending, like our desire is strong and our intention and our practices are strong and we're creating those high frequencies together. And so it, it amplifies really that whole um journey really amplifies it um, to where it just puts us all in that space of where we're feeling it you know and each of us is assisting in that co-creation it makes it yeah it's just a beautiful thing it's like you know you can you can play by yourself and that's fun but when you got a whole choir playing with you and a band and everybody's you know jamming with the music and then too that's cool too you know (laughs) Yeah, and co-creating the music, you know, there's a sense of everyone's co-creating the music as opposed to just, you know, one person's making the music and then there's an audience that's just kind of passively, you know, listening to it. We talked about that a lot, too. There's this, like, yeah. you know, quantum physics shows us that the observer and the observed are one, you know, like, like it's like this feeling of, like, the moment is being co-created, like, from every cell of every being in the universe at the same time, Mm -hmm. which is, which is the reality, you know, but it's like awakening to that, like opening to that realization, which requires just being present. Absolutely. And um, yeah, it like, it opens me to like a couple things from, from what you said. One is like a theme that I'm hearing and what we're discussing is like, there's a sense of like, I'm going to get there in the future. You know, I'm going to get there in the future. I'm going to get there. Which is which is fine in the sense that like we we are projecting future and past, so the mind's creating right. future and past. So we we wouldn't have been able to set this up if we didn't talk about Tuesday at eleven thirty a.m. So that's like true on the level that is true, but in the deeper level, it's not really true, right? right. right. So <laughs> there's this sense of like what I what I'm getting in like talking in the discussion right now is it's all here right now. Yeah. You know, and like remembering that it's all here right now because we have this sense of like, oh, I'm not enough or I'm lacking something or I'm missing something. Or if I if I get this thing like way over there, I have to, I have to try to get it. And everything will be OK, you know, yeah. but it's like we we like support each other in this realization that it's all it's all it's all here right now. Like it's already here because this is all there is. Yeah. It's already here in this moment because only because this moment is all there is. So like where else would it be? Whatever it is, it's got to be here. It's got to be here now. Yeah. And, and so then where it gets like really interesting is like any, as far as like channeling your highest genius, like any kind of effort you make or any kind of like pushing or forcing, even if it's like the subtlest level of effort, it's like, it's not, it take actually takes you away from what's already here right now. <laughs> right, right. Trying to change it. Yeah. That's it. And the the funny like a sense of like oh I'm I, let me try to channel my highest genius. It doesn't. Yeah. It's 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 not it's not where it's at. It's it's yeah. so fascinating. It really is. That's a great point. The the feeling of feeling into now and just letting go and actually being with what's present. It's like it starts. Sometimes it's for me. I find myself. Um frightened by it only because it's the ego and the resistance like as it begins to peek through you know that that fear of whoa <laughs> you know as you and then coming back to it and just falling into it and like 
surrender and feel so much better. Um, so yeah, for me, it's just that surrender into the love and that surrender into that, uh, the moment. It typically allows whatever is arising to unfold <laughs> and, and, and be experienced in such a fulfilling way. That's so, that's so wild to me. I mean, I'm grateful for it, you know, that it's that simple. <laughs> it's like, wow, really? Okay. Mm -hmm. That's a beautiful thing. Thank you for that. Yeah, allowing, right, allowing what's here to unfold and how good that feels, like a total, that letting go is like there's a sense of like liberation, there's freedom, just peace, love. Um, but then, <laughs> the game where it's so fascinating is like the mind goes, no, this isn't the way it should be happening. Yeah. This is wrong. It should be happening a different way than this. Yeah. You know, and then that's totally shuts down everything as far as the, let, you know, the, the, the feeling of like just totally letting go. Um, so that's the, that's the one thing. And the other thing is, is there's a sense, you know, a, a common question that I'll get and you probably heard is like, well, what does that mean? I just let anybody do whatever they want to me. I'm just like a doormat or I can just, you know, people can just walk all over me. But actually when you're in that space, it doesn't operate like that. Yeah. You, you really don't know what's going to come through. Yeah. Right. So there's, there's even a letting go of the idea of being a particular way or, right. um, there's just, there's a response in the moment that's like more precise than you could think your way into. Totally. Yeah. And that's the yeah. beautiful part. Like you said, that, that genius, it's almost as if like in this moment when we're listening and we're allowing whatever thoughts to flow, it's almost as if there's a reliance on what's seeking to be birth versus a reliance on that conditioned idea of what you think should or can or <laughs> you'd like to be birth. It's a it becomes a surrender and trust to what is. So you're not um getting caught up in the idea of even the idea of what you want because a lot of times you know we have these intentions to create this experience and that experience and that's fine yet the distraction becomes what we make what appears mean like when what a, when what is arising is not congruent with what you intend you start to feel resistance and discomfort right and so mm -hmm. like you were saying just allowing what's to arise and almost like a surrender and a trust in that um, and letting that be the experience um internally is a big part of it because the meaning and the, the judgment of the experience and all of that is happening there so I think that's where the challenge comes for me and for a lot of people is when the thoughts are arise, arising about what's arising <laughs> right and then believing in those thoughts and then finding a way to center ourselves where those don't entangle us or distract us from just being. Like being and thinking, a little different, but just being and allowing the thinking, being and allowing the whatever's arising, the feeling, without the resistance, the judgment, the feeling that it needs to be different. I think that's the... Um, the fun part for me where I uh, even find myself resisting that, <laughs> you know? And then I remember, wait a minute, how does that feel? Oh, that doesn't feel so good. So all I need to do is come back and align and remember, it's okay. It's all perfect. It's all my beliefs and the meaning I'm creating telling me otherwise. And if I choose to believe in that, my experience feels like that if I just align and come back 
remembering and letting go, it's like, oh, wow, this feels so much better. Oh, yeah, here we are. Back to the center. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what's crazy is like when – what's so crazy is like when you – when you lose the center, you can't find it through thinking. Yeah. And that's why I think we like, we like, cause we're so focused on thinking in our, you know, in our world right now, the human yeah. condition right now, we, we think thinking is a solution to everything. You know, let me think, yeah. if I think about it, I'll get to this, but like, you can't find it through thinking. In fact, thinking takes you away from it. Yeah. So it's so, it's like, so, um, such a great realization to be like, where's my center? Well, my center, like we just established, is like right here. Right. Like where else would it be? Yeah. <laughs> it's That's right true, here. Man. But I'm thinking, I'm trying to think my way into the center or thinking how I lost my center or I have some idea of what the center looks like and mm. how far I am away from it. And like, it's like you, your mind is just like spinning and spinning and spinning. And then it's just like, there's this moment where it just like stops. And it's like, oh, of course, like, I've been in the center this whole time. I've never not been in the center, even for like a millisecond. Yeah. I'm just like, you know, I just lost awareness. Yeah. That's an excellent point. Excellent way to put yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> the, the experience of it, I think, is, um, you know, most, most of the things we're, we're striving for, um, we, I, I feel like it's, we get distracted when we're chasing for that something else, like we're talking about, like the now is really has everything. And then it's so easy to feel a desire arise and then completely let go of that desire and, and look at the appearance of things, right? Look at the appearance mm -hmm. of things and, and the mind kick in of, creating some completely different experience than what you really desire, right? So one of the fun parts of what's been helping remind me of, oh, wait, don't, don't be distracted from aligning is recognizing that that desire itself is the very vibration of what we want to feel. And that desire is of source. So all, like whatever desire is arising in this moment is of source. It is of your highest self, of God, of the divine, fill in the blank, right? But then that desire, <laughs> that very thing, like in this moment, I want to feel peace or I want to feel at ease or I want to feel, um, want to feel bliss. Like as soon as we identify that desire, that's the vibration. Like if we're aligning and we're feeling into it, like, boom, bliss. Oh, that's the vibration. It's just mm -hmm. waiting for you to amplify it, right? The yeah. desire is the vibration, and it just wants to be amplified. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. go ahead. No, <laughs> it's funny how we're so in tune. We know each other, like, once a talk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, it's like, like I, I desire for peace, right? Right. So then it's like, well, the desire, you say like the desire, the peace is in the desire. And like another way you can say it is like that peace is here now. Like you just yeah. notice it. Exactly. It's here. You know, whatever you're, whatever you're looking for, you're looking for love. You're looking for being free. You know, it's all here now. It's just a matter of noticing it. Yeah. You thinking you don't have it. <laughs> it's creating the perception of not having it. Exactly. It's really that simple. <laughs> like it's so simple yeah. when you talk about it, but obviously to like have the awareness of it. Um, where we are right now in our consciousness, it's, it's, it could be more challenging than just talking about it. But, the, yeah. but that's the thing is like, we, we tend to like overthink things and make things like the mind wants to make it really complicated and like all these different steps and all these different strategies and all these different, yeah. you know, but it's just like, no, it's, it's, it's all here. That's it's it. all here right now. That's it. And, and being aware of it. And something else that you, you were, you were talking about that really sparked something really powerful in Sammy was this sense of like, something new wants to be birthed through us, mm -hmm. you know, and, and we don't know what it is. Like yeah. that's, that's the letting go. Like that's the surrender. That's the, like, it just the releasing the, mm -hmm. for this new thing to come through us and whatever we're thinking that things should be or things should go, 
is really based on the past because thought is the only thing we can, we only think about the future based on what we've experienced before. Right. Right. So we're, we're thinking about the future based on the past and we're trying to like, we're trying to replicate something or reproduce something that we've done before. That's great. Right. That's, that's great. one of the things that's really interesting, you know, with the retreats when we do them is like, there's a sense and you know, I ha I noticed it in myself too. There's a sense of like, well, this is what happened before. So this is the way it should go this time. Right. Yep. <laughs> but it's never going to go the way it's gone before. And so this, we always try yeah. to like make that really clear in the beginning of like whatever you've experienced before, this is a new, a new experience. You know, this is a new adventure that we're on together and just making space for the birth of the new. And we can, we can, I mean, the, the challenge your highest genius is really just that it's like making the space for the birth of the new in every moment. And when you do that, it's like, you know, insights come through and profound realizations and ways of seeing things and, you know, being illuminated in these different ways and epiphanies. And, but you can't like, Oh, I'm going to try to have an epiphany like right now, you know, it's yeah. like, you're just like in this, this space that let align, allow, let go, as you say. And then I think for me, that's, what's exciting about, like this kind of conversation. I think that's what I'm really interested in this kind of conversation is having it just when I say like organic or spontaneous is really just allowing the creative genius to flow through in the moment instead of yeah. like, well, here's question one, here's question two, here's question three. You know, it, there's, there's not an aliveness that's there that we can access and people listening can access. By the way, I just want to say, um, feel free to ask any questions and join us in this amazing moment welcome to scott and kathy and stacy hey hey and annie and natalia and uh, everybody i like scott's fancy scott's comment um how we feel is the amplifier how we feel is the amplifier our will is the amplifier uh even thoughts we think can be the amplifier of those vibrations and then um, all external things can be the amplifier uh, of whatever we want to experience. So I think those are very insightful posts there. I like that. Jessica, Jessica joining us from Sweden, oh, Ashura man. from Uganda, Melody. Thanks, everybody, for being here. So much fun to be in the creative genius together, the highest genius together. <laughs> and the, the funny thing, too, but brother... Um, uh, I, I just dawned on me the upcoming retreat, the levels of love. Yeah, uh, four levels of love. It's it's an interesting uh, journey when we're thinking about you know self love and all these different ways to love the same thing, the oneness that's appearing and unfolding, right? But mm -hmm. um, I find I, I was realizing that um, recently. I was creating this block in my own mind of, and very recently actually, I think it was like yesterday or last night, creating the, this idea of I want to love others or um, I just want to be loved or I just want to be blah, blah, blah. And I realized in that moment that, wow, this concept of what love is, is a block. I am limiting. Totally agree. 100%. Allowing myself to just be and creating some illusion that's getting in the way of just being and, and being what love is, you know? I'm thinking mm -hmm. it needs to be something else or trying to pre-figure it out or change this, that, or the other. It's just wild, man. It's like that moment of, oh, okay, that's blocking the, pro the flow. <laughs> Let's stop mm -hmm. doing that, you know? So mm -hmm. just, just popped in my mind to share that um, learning to, to love ourselves, I, I think, is really powerful when we let go of what we think it is and open up to kind of what you were saying, letting it unfold, um, not holding to these r rote, dogmatic, uh, fixed ideas of what it has to be and what it should be, and more so letting go and exploring what it is. What is it? You know? Like, okay, let's just see. So they're feeling into a lot of that as well of just, you know, releasing a lot of the boundaries and um limits on what I've um, what I felt 
love needs to be or should be. You know, it's like, okay. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm ready to surrender. I'm letting go. Yeah, this does feel mm-hmm. better. This does feel expansive. This does feel free. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. so, yeah. I think we'll be um continuing to explore that together and sharing that uh, freedom, you know. It's a lifelong exploration. Yep. Indeed. Ashira says, great show. Uh, lost it. Thank you. John Stringer, nice seeing you at the show. Thanks for the contribution. And then she says, I got a kick out of this. And sometimes we are like, what's love got to do with it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Scott says, could you guys share a little bit about how you get out of your own way? Mm. Um, I just want to make one comment about all this stuff's interrelated. So I want to just want to make one comment about love and then we'll get into Scott's question. Um, just with love, it's like, it's the same. It's I think it's the same thing. It's the sense of love is here right now. Like it, it couldn't possibly be anywhere else, you know? So just a lot of the stuff around like twin flames and soulmates and all of this, it's like a, this black consciousness of like, Oh, he's out there somewhere or she's out there somewhere. And like, yeah, that that's totally valid, but only if you recognize that love is available for you, you yourself right now. Like that's the foundation. If you don't have a sense of love in yourself, how can you how can you um have someone amplify that love because there's nothing inside you to amplify. Yeah. You know, I mean there is, but you're not you're not recognizing it. You're you're projecting it outward. You're disempowering yourself, right? So there's like this way, it's like so essential to recognize that love is an inside job, you know, and love is, is the essence of who you are and love is the essence of who we are. And it's only then that we can have a relationship that's, that's healthy, that's an expression of that love that we realized in ourselves. But, you know, the sense of like, I don't have love and I don't have love in my life and I have to look for it, it just, it just doesn't work and you're just going to keep oh, that person's not the right person. No, that person's not the right person. And it's like, you know, it's like you got to be the right person in yourself, meaning you're like recognizing, realizing like, you know, who you are and the essence of this love that's the essence of who you are and and the essence of this love that's in everything. You know, it's in you, it's in a tree, it's in a cloud, it's in a dog, it's in it's it's in your heart, It's it's in this moment, it's in this space right now. And that's, that's what I'm excited about with your tree is not, not just this kind of like lack consciousness of like, Oh, I have to find my twin flame. I don't have my twin flame. Um, but this sense of the deeper core essence of love of really that this love is the essence of who we are right now, no matter who we're with or not with. And that is what allows a really healthy loving relationship. So maybe you want to, speak to that for a couple of minutes being a man that has uh <laughs> been married for many years and people are inspired by your relationship you want to speak to that for sure a moment sure i i raise my hands in complete ignorance <laughs> no i'm teasing in one way but in another way i'm serious the uh thing i realized is it's through alignment that only that's the only thing i've experienced that ensures um I can see the perfection in what what is in my relationship and what is in um, how I relate uh, with, and it takes away the judgment. It allows me to not feel like I have to fix anything. It allows me to trust the unfolding and allows me to not resist what I see in the quote other. Um, So in my relationship, I don't always choose to align <laughs> and that that brings about its own um, experiences. But Kathy and I have had such a beautiful journey together with vulnerability, with learning to trust, with challenging our beliefs, <laughs> you know, and finding out, oh, it doesn't work the way I've always believed, you know, from everything from loving one another to uh, raising our, uh, and teaching our children together to uh, manifesting and co-creating together. It's like this intimate journey of um, someone you 
share and see and relate to life with and it helps you see um, more of who you are. If you could, well, through, if it depends on what, what you choose and what you want to experience, of course. But like in our case, it's a, uh, it's almost like you, you think that um, all your thoughts are private. Uh, Course in Miracles talks about this. You think that all your thoughts are private and the fear is exposing all of that, right? Like if someone else was able to access everything that was in your head, right? Well, mm -hmm. the cool part is the relationship helps you stop letting go of that fear and letting down that, um, that guard and being vulnerable so you can accept all of that. It's really a it's really a self acceptance for me. I'm just describing one way to look at it. Of course, um, one way to look at it is a a journey of self acceptance through relating to the appearance of another, right? And so beautiful, yeah, yeah. And yep. so that uh, experience so much of that letting go of the fears and and just revealing truly, and and the beautiful part of receiving that um, space and that acceptance. Like uh, Kathy has been so uh, supportive and um, wonderful in allowing me to uh, be with her as I am in this journey, and, you know, and um, just so there's a beauty in that of just sharing like who you who you're showing up as, <laughs> you know, letting down the guard and the pretense and the and all of that, and then being able to spread that beyond. Um, and, and and when I say uh, like the word authenticity comes to mind, authenticity, you know, I guess it is however you're choosing to be in that moment. And whatever is real for you, and you know, you could say that's authentic. Then I think there's another level of authenticity, which is uh, found through the through alignment, through centering. It's like this other mm. level of yeah of the real coming through that's yeah beyond the, like, that other stuff that you think is real. <laughs> you know, I, I'm not gonna get like political, but I just want to say, like, as an example. Like Donald Trump would be authentic on the first level, yeah, but not really on the second level necessarily. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so it's fun to, it's it's fun to. I think relationships give you that opportunity to um, well, everything gives you that opportunity to choose. But um, relationships are, in uh, one view, a great way to um, help see what you're choosing and help, mm -hmm. help really amplify what you're choosing. Um, like you ever notice how someone you're, you've been in a relationship with for quite some time, um, that feeling of, and let's just say it, it's been beautiful and you had that wonderful feeling with them in, initially and then later you start to notice the irritations or the quirks or the things that you react to would have, what I've noticed is what's really happened is you have conditioned yourself to with a meaning or a judgment or a belief about that per person. Um, whereas before you hadn't conditioned your mind to see that person a certain way and you were enjoying what arose and you resonated with it or whatever, eventually when the conditioned thinking and judgments came and the conclusions about them came, you begin to see how they arise through that perspective of this solidified judgment or this solidified, this means this about that person and this means that about, you know, and so that stuff gets triggered. But all it is is the stuff you've created to resist what, how they've shown up in, in the judgments you've created to resist it. Um, 
in a, in a sense, creating those judgments about yourself. Like, where do judgments even come from? Like, why do we even ever have a, a judgment about somebody, you know, or a judgment about something? It's always coming from yeah. some past experience or some resistance or some conclusion, <laughs> right? It's like, where, where does that stuff come from? And that's usually the blocks that we're discovering that, oh, wait, here's a way we've constricted life, constricted ourselves. Mm -hmm. like, and, and here's a way we're cutting ourselves off from this beauty that we were first feeling when that external came. We were choosing it and allowing it to be amplified. And then we cut mm -hmm. it off eventually and start dampening it. That's the same thing I've mm -hmm. learned about, my, about life, period. It's, it's like opening my heart again to let go of those uh, hard and blocks and misperceptions and judgments um, that when I was a baby, it's like when you, when you meet your first love, it's like when you're a baby, you might have cried or whatever, but you're experiencing all these things without some of the blocks, and then you start piling them on, and it's like life becomes decent, you become desensitized to life, or it's not as miraculous or you don't see the beauty around you anymore it's not that it's not there you just made all these conclusions about it well it's the same thing i think with with the other or the relationship we can do so undoing that for me is just what works for me is uh i i i use the term alignment because that helps remind me that's what i was my highest self was teaching me to practice and reminding me that alignment and aligning with source, the truth of what we are, always brings us back to that center, always brings us back to being present. Um, not that it matters what we call source, or not that it matters what it is per se, what matters is really experiencing it, so finding what works for us to feel and experience into it, so we can let go of those blocks, so we can experience life in the the magnificence and the beauty and open our hearts again and just feel into it um, without the resistance, without the judgment. And so we can experience the other that are, that appear without that same thing and feel that love again and that bliss and that, you know, that just, yeah. just on cloud nine-ness that we're creating, yeah. but we're allowing them to amplify, you know? Yeah. It feels like it, it, it comes from, I mean, I see a theme, like a through theme in like everything we're discussing. It comes from like this, like sometimes I call it like innocence consciousness, mm. you know, the sense of like seeing someone like just seeing them fresh, like seeing them in this moment fresh, you know, like being able to not carry things that have come, like carry this residue of weight of things that have come from the past. Um, and that's a really fascinating thing about like long term relationships is, is how does that happen? You know, how do you how do you do that? So that's like a whole rich yeah. subject to get into it's a great practice um, though bro i'm telling you it's i've only been at yeah, it what 14 practice. years <laughs> and i'm still yeah. like expanding like wow this is uh it's i mean it's it's really this it's just a a representation of our relationship with ourselves and with life and like yeah i was with gonna the say that moment. too yeah exactly yeah with the waking like moment self-forgiveness totally man so yeah it's such a cool yeah a, a, a cool um, um, tool or a cool path to choose. You know, choose your journey. <laughs> it can be that. It can be this. Yeah, yeah choose your own adventure. Yeah, that's it. Choose your own adventure. <laughs> uh, I think also, like, having a sense of the purpose, the purpose of your relationship or your relationships, but your, your, if you're in a partnership, the purpose of your relationship is really essential. So, like what, what kind of what I hear you saying is like what I what I experience with you and Kathy is like there's a dedication to coming together to like learn and grow and evolve in your consciousness mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. through reflection to each other and and being of service right. to the world together, you know, and I think those are the two essential um, reasons, so to speak, to come together yeah. with it's, somebody. It's, um, and the first one. Yeah. Like if you have that purpose, then when you face some kind of a challenge, it's actually kind of a good thing because it's allowing you to learn and grow and evolve yeah. together. But where people go wrong is the sense of like, I'm coming together with you because you're, you're going to make me happy. And I can say from like 
billions of people throughout the world historically through thousands of years that like that one doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> and like that person is just not going to make you happy. You know, no matter how much you believe it or the illusion that you think that that's going to happen again, like that's, that comes from the inside. Um, and so then when something happens externally, it's like, well, you're supposed to make me happy. You're not making me happy. No, they're not supposed to make you happy. And like, no one's here to make you happy. Right. You know, that's a realization that comes from within. And that's what allows like this whole other way of relating to open yeah. and like, you know, um, come into being together. It's almost like it, it's almost like it's not even the same kind of relationship. It's almost like it's two different things that don't even go, they're not even the same thing. What do you mean by that? Um, well, like I, what I see most people doing, you know, is a sense of like, I want someone to make me happy. Whether they do it like consciously or unconsciously, because even people that are really conscious, unconsciously, it's the same thing happening. Like I want someone to make me happy, right? So um, then you're in the ego, there's this codependent mm -hmm. thing and that ultimately that's all great because it's all going to open you up to learning about yourself anyway. But if you come into it in a sense of like, I'm coming together with you, um, I don't like expect you to make me happy, but we can learn how to love together. We can learn about how to love and grow and evolve together, you know? So when we face like problems or challenges, we can learn and grow and evolve through that. And that's the purpose of us like coming together is to learn how to love more, learn how to be the love that we are more and more yeah. fully and deeply. That's yeah. a totally different kind of relationship, yeah. you know? Very much. You're right. I think that commitment, you said two things at the onset and I recognized a resistance in me arise when you said it. And it's the, uh, uh, self, um, the commitment to our own journey and then service to others. Mm. And yeah. when you said that, that's when I felt myself get online. So I was practicing getting back in line, aligned and missing. And it's, mm. it's funny how um, the exploration of service has been such a uh, growing expanding the beautiful journey for me because of my mm. miscondition or my conditioned perception of it it's like i've had to heal from the misperception of what service is right because man service for me it was laborious and taxing and sacrificial yeah. and all yeah. this stuff and yeah. i think it can be um uh, especially with the conditioned idea of what selfless and selfish is and all of that judgment yep. around it. Yeah. I've had that stuff pounded and accepted a lot of that. Mm -hmm. And so when you said that it triggered it, I was like, whoa, wait a minute, don't fall. <laughs> you like, were you were in the military, right? Yeah, I was Early in your life. Was, yeah, yeah. So yeah, you got you really knew what service was. <laughs> but that it's funny. That's a whole different kind of service. Yeah, that's a different kind of service, man. And the cool thing is, it's like, to me, service is like love, right? Uh, yes, yes. I think that's a better way. I was saying that's yeah. a better way of saying it is like love for the whole. Yeah. And I, and I think that's what, um, I, I think it's a good conversation because it's another great example of how the illusion or the conditioned thinking of what something is um can be the misperception and the misbelief that has you resisting something that is so much more beautiful and yeah. so much more fulfilling than you've imagined and you've been conditioned to yeah. see <laughs> you know yeah and so that so i so i'd love you to talk about that uh service to ser service a little bit to help expand and raise our consciousness on what service is you know and um, how that yeah, can be I such think, a beautiful thing. Yeah, like the way I see it is like you, you have two people and they, they have this sense of, let's just make it really simple. They have a sense of like love yeah. between them, this powerful sense of love between them. And there's something, there's something natural that wants to like, it wants to expand it out and share with others. Yeah. You know, so that's what you could call like the service, being, yeah. being the service or having some, you know, some, there's this, it, and it's, it's just like, like I said, it's like a natural thing. Love wants to expand, you know. Yeah. So there's some there's some way of like this creative impulse to share it yeah. 
with other people, which is what the retreats are. You know, when we come into a space, like we're sharing this love that we discovered with other people, you know, and inviting them into that space. Um, so service could be interpreted as like, oh, this isn't true to me inside myself, but I'm just going to do it because like I'm supposed to help people. Exactly. So it's not that, you yeah, know, exactly. something that's really coming from the depths that just, you know, yeah. comes out yeah. from you. And it's like, you just want to naturally want to share it with, you know, the and world. That, glad you said that because um, it's almost as if um, a lot of times I found myself looking at how my wife serves, right? And then I'll judge myself like, man, I'm not showing up serving like that. And then when I get aligned, I realize that's a beautiful expression of service, but I serve this way. I'm here. Yep. To, in fact, I'm here. To, I came to serve this way. <laughs> yep. I didn't come to serve that way. Um, yeah. And I'm most fulfilled. The reason I know I didn't come to serve that way in this moment is because I'm most fulfilled by serving this way. <laughs> yeah. And it feels amazing, you know, and it's like, yeah. it's almost effortless to serve that way. And, and, uh -huh. and there's a mutual benefit in serving the way that I came to serve in this moment. Right. And so that, um, I think when, when we can, or for me, it's, when we can align and get to this place of um, back to the center, we can look at service for really as an expression of love, like you were saying, um, extending that love, um, creating um, expressions of that love that, quote, the other get to witness and be reminded of their own light, <laughs> you know, their own bliss. It's kind of like when I, when I, when I sing, um, I used to think of it as a service in going to help somebody or do this or do that. And that, that there's nothing wrong with that view. Now I look at it <laughs> as an opportunity to get the hell out the way <laughs> so I can enjoy this beautiful uh, expression that, other people seem to benefit from somehow, <laughs> you know, it's like, and there's, there's not that either, either view is different, better or anything, but, but it's just this realization of when I'm falling into the um, beauty of, of the moment, so whether singing or whatever, and I'm allowing the, the separation to go away. I have an even more fulfilling experience. Um, and it's almost like I see the perfect, I witness the perfection. Um, and that's how yeah. I serve, that's how I serve, you know? Totally. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's totally how I see you serving. I think that's how people I know see you serving. And it's, it's interesting to, to, to like come full circle. Like you just yeah. kind, of, kind of made a kind of profound neural connection in my brain, which is like, the greatest way to be of service is to channel your highest genius. Yes. That's the greatest <laughs> way to be of service. That's it. The greatest way is to, yeah. to, and to, yeah. and to me, that's a, uh, to channel your inner genius is to align to, and to allow and let go and to actually in the moment feel into that, that beauty and that um, presence of what's here. And then the funny thing too is that inspired action that comes through. It's almost like uh, you know this when we're when we're listening, we're centered and we're channeling. We're actually um, allowing and responding through this inspired act. It's it's like being in tune with higher consciousness and simply letting go, watching, observing, and then allowing whatever inspired action comes through to be fulfilled. And so that inspired action is in essence the light that we came to share. That inspired, whether it's a, a word, an act of kindness, or what have you, all of it underneath is vibration. Mm -hmm. And all of it is frequency that we're creating, allowing it to show at other levels, whether it be, you know, feeling, whether it be thought, 
whether it be word, sound, whether it be uh, some visual action, whatever. It's like all this stuff we're co-creating is like when we're aligned, we're just really allowing that highest will or that highest knowing um, to fulfill its desire through us and as us. Yet often we see the desire arise in the moment or we see whatever's bubbling up in the moment and we're so used to creating these limitation, limited views of it and these judgments of it that don't really feel good. That's the crazy thing. They really don't feel good, but we love doing it. You know, we love creating this block and resistance to what is until we've had enough. <laughs> until we're like, okay, that's enough of that. I'm ready for something more expansive. And so, and, and all of it's so okay. I, I feel like my my greatest um, desire is to uh, share what I feel when I recognize it's all okay. It's all perfect. Everything you do is perfect. You it's are all here perfect. now. Yes, yeah. you're perfect. It's okay. Whatever you're choosing, whether it's confusing, mm -hmm. whether it's blissful, yep. it's okay. Yep. You're perfect. Just, but mm -hmm. then the surrendering into that and feeling is like, oh, okay. It's it's like when you're ready to just be relieved, it's here, you know, whenever you're ready. But it's okay if you're not. It's okay, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Beautiful. Um, I just got a couple of minutes left. I wanted to share some of these comments. Nancy says, thanks for taking me back to the center. I love sharing. Peace, brothers. Samuel says, release the limitations and live limitlessly. Yes. Samuel. Melody says, we are serving when we are being truly authentic. Yeah. Totally agree. Kathy Stringer, I like this one. John Stringer loves to serve by doing the dishes. <laughs> That's her new affirmation. <laughs> That's awesome. She did yeah. ask me if I'd take a, a, a day of the week, and I said yes. And I'm going to enjoy the heck out of that day of the week. Scott says, inspiring to see men speaking deeply of loving. How do you see the masculine presenting itself in our present cultural reflection of love and what love is? Wow, that's, a, that's an awesome question. And that's one we're going to have to continue in the – maybe we can touch on it really quickly, but I'd love to continue that, like, in the thread in the coming weeks. I think that that's a really great, a really great question. Um, Kathy says she's glad she's on the journey of self-acceptance self with you. Annie says she loves loves you, John and Kathy. Love you. Jessica says you are the love. You can stop searching at yes, the yes. outside of you. Yes, yes. Totally agree. Then we had a couple questions, Kathy. Question: So when the fear of the fear or the thoughts take you away from your center, what do you do to get in that? What do you do in that moment to get back? Mm -hmm. And then John had kind of—I mean, sorry, Scott had kind of a related question. Could you guys share a little bit about how you get out of your own way? Mm -hmm. So how about we just like address that quick and then um, tell me, John, your, your website, johnstringerinc.com, right? Yep, inc.com, yeah. Okay, so that's, that's, that's the link is below. People can check out what John's, uh, what John's got going on. Anything you want to share about anything coming up or anything you're doing that Excites you. We've already discussed the retreat, the retreat April 20th to 20, 22nd. We still have a couple spots left. We've got a pretty full house, but uh, if you want to join us, just uh, let us know. We have, a, we have a few spots left for that. John and I will be together for three days, um, less than a month from now in Asheville. So that's really, really looking forward to that. Yes. It is. Anything else you want to share? Yes. Kathy's uh, posting the book, <laughs> um, The Alignment. Oh, I figured Kathy abundance would be on vibration. It. Oh yeah, she's always on it. The abundance <laughs> vibration uh, guide to alignment. Um, I love the framework of the four levels of creation it presents because it, it actually helps me look at uh, where my power lies internally. A great framework of viewing where my power resides internally and how to engage it. Now, what's funny, I used to hate getting 
complex with anything. Mm -hmm. um, so I love that simplified definition. But then there's room for those who like to get complex to go there. Because there is a, believe it or not, we judge complexity. Mm -hmm. um, but it's all part of the creation. There's beauty in it. You know, there's beauty in simplicity and there's beauty in the chaos because it's the more <laughs> what appears to be mm -hmm. chaos. But this this takes a very simple definition or framework to view how we navigate our power. And then it's such a good reminder so we can expand into and let go of the resistance into all we're creating because all of it is what we're creating. And it's like, if we're resisting the complexity, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. if you think about it, everything we've created is vast. It is mm -hmm. immense, but it's all beauty. And it's not the real, but it's for our enjoyment. It's for us. It's not against us. So resisting it can only limit us, you know? So, mm -hmm. so it, it's just a, um, give some simple practices and some simple ways to expand and to, and accept more of what we're creating and what we are. Um, then, of course, we've got um, a songwriting retreat, conscious songwriting retreat coming up, but it's going to be fun. Um, and then uh, that we haven't even announced that. So sign up for the newsletter and you can get three free albums worth of digital music as well um, on the website. So that's all I'll share for now. The tour page has um, a lot of events and Oh, last I'd say we do. We have a lot of intuitive training courses and um, meditations and daily guidance for free, really, at uh, mastermomentmakers.com. And then there's pay, a paid membership that you can access other courses as well. So that's been a fun journey with my dear friend Arlene, who I look forward to you uh, uh, yep. connecting yep. with soon. I'm Coming. sure we'll all do something together very soon. Yeah. I'll, I'll get her on here actually. I'll, I'll yeah, I'd love it. Oh, she would be incredible, man. I think you'd yeah. love her energy and her um, yeah. intuitive mastery. I love the way she does it, man. It's awesome. Thanks so much for being here, as always. Thank you, bro. I friend. love it. I always enjoy um, the expansion coming together. Um, yeah. Like I feel into it and it helps me shift blocks and become more aware yeah. of things I'm holding on to to let go of, man. So I appreciate you for that. Yeah, totally agree. And I also feel like other people joining us, like, you know, I feel there's, there's an energetic resonance that it's like this unified resonant field, people from around the world tuning in. It's like this thing that just like, mm. it's really powerful. So I'm grateful for everyone else for mm. whether you shared something, you know, or you just sat silently and listened and your presence is, is valuable and really appreciated. Absolutely. So, yeah, thanks, John, so much. Look forward Thank to you, seeing brother. you. Well, I guess we'll be talking in a few days on the phone. Yes, we will. Love you, man. I love you, too. See you soon. Thank you all for being here. Keep the conversation going in the thread. Um, whatever questions we didn't fully get to um, in this live content, we'll keep it going in the thread in the coming weeks to come. Next week, my friend, Sean King, who actually even people don't realize is one of the founders of the Big Glow community, will be joining us. Have a great week. See you next week, 1130 a.m. Eastern.